Well, I'm afraid I fibbed a little tiny bit last week. What'd you do? Well, I said we wouldn't be on an airplane this week. Well, ac actually, I said we probably, probably wouldn't, wouldn't be on an airplane this week. And yeah, as it turns out, we're, we're on an airplane <laughs> this week. But it all started, David was outside, my brother David, was outside working on his Buick, his 1914 Buick, right. and he hears this airplane and he looks up and he gets on the cell phone and he gives us a call and he says, a Ford tri-motor just flew over my house. <laughs> so we got on the internet, we did a little bit of investigating. It seems that the experimental airplane people are doing a little modern day barnstorming out of the Woods Cross oh. Airport with a Ford tri-motor. Of course. So we're heading there to go for a ride on a Ford tri-motor. How cool is that? Let's go for it. Well, two of our favorite things are Fords and airplanes, so what could be cooler than a Ford airplane? It all started in 1925 when Ford bought out William Stout and formed the Stout Metal Airplane Company. So they started to produce this incredible airplane, the Ford Tri-Motor. You know, they had a plan for a single-seat plane that they were going to name after the Model T and call the Flying Fliver. Shades of Absent-Minded Professor. Look at this. The engine gauges are mounted outside the cockpit on this pylon. The pilot had to look out the window to see them. It's easy to forget that this is a real early airplane because it feels actually quite modern. In the earliest design, it wasn't even going to have an enclosed cockpit because pilots said they couldn't judge their airspeed without feeling the wind in their face. So that gives you a sense of just how early this plane really is. And just like a Model T, it has no fuel gauge. You check the level by putting a stick in the tank. Like a Model T. Exactly. Well, enough backstory. Let's go for a ride. I have to say that it was actually easy to forget that we were in a really old airplane during the takeoff. It didn't feel that much different than taking off in a modern airliner. It's sort of a shame that Ford gave up on building airplanes. But at least they build a lot of really cool cars. The plane was affectionately known as the Tin Goose, but it isn't tin, it's aluminum, corrugated aluminum. Aluminum's pretty weak, but if you corrugate it, it gets quite strong. So that was Ford's innovation there. Ford opted to not build their own engines. They bought them from both Wright and Pratt and Whitney, but they put three of them on there as a safety measure, so if one went out, the plane would continue to fly normally. Most of the engines of that day were, well, a little bit sketchy, but these guys are incredibly tight and super, super reliable. This particular aircraft is owned by the EAA, that's the Experimental Aircraft Association. Those are those guys that put on that really cool air show every year in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Anyway, they send it around to the different local chapters and they sell rides on it in order to fund their activities. One of the really cool things here are the size of the windows. You can just see all over the place. And that's not like riding in a modern aircraft. <laughs> this 
This particular Ford tri-motor was built in 1929 and sold to Eastern Air Transport, which later became Eastern Airlines. It was also used in the incredibly corny Jerry Lewis movie, Family Jewels. That's quite a nice appearance in that film. The plane was all but destroyed in 1973 when it got loose from its moorings in a windstorm and flipped over on its back and just really heavily damaged. The EAA got a hold of it and took them 12 years, but they've completely rebuilt it and it's perfect. Most of the members of the EAA have frankly perfected the high art of screwing around. These guys build their own experimental airplanes, eh, sometimes in the garage, sometimes in the kitchen, sometimes in the living room, and then they take the darn thing out and fly it around. And that's not just screwing around, that's screwing around with conviction and a little courage. They take their crazy contraptions to the Oshkosh Air Show every year and show them off. And if you find yourself in the area at that time of year, hey, check it out. It is incredibly fun. And some of the members like to get a hold of old airplanes like this one and restore them. So that's an aspect of the group as well. I have ridden in, driven, or just owned a lot of different Fords over the years, all the way from the Model T to the Shelby Cobra. But it could just be that this is the funnest Ford I've ever ridden in. I wonder what Karen would think if I suggested moving the walls around in the big garage and trying to make it wide enough to hold an airplane. I guess that's just not practical, but dang, it would be fun. Well, that is a significant amount of fun. Oh, that was. That's about as much fun as you can have. Let's do it again. Around. Let's go do it again. Yeah. I mean, what the heck? We'll just turn around and go back. Right. They're still doing that. They're going to do it for the next few days. So, right. what the heck? I'm yeah. tempted. We can just go back and go back ride and around in the again. thing again. Right. Just an enormous amount of fun. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, get on over to the channel. There's the little rocket ship logo right down here, and you can click on that, and it'll take you to the channel, and from there you can look at all 80 movies that are up there, and check those out. There's a lot more airplane movies on there, too, if airplanes are your oh, yes. thing. And then, of course, there's trains and ships and just all kinds all of kinds fun of and frivolity exactly. over there. So go check that out, and while you're there, subscribe. The real easy way to subscribe is click on the little blue button that's popping in right now, right here, it says subscribe. Click on it, it takes you to the channel, and you are now subscribed. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. No. Because it wasn't boring. Oh, this one. Oh. Nope. And we'll see you here again next Sunday with some more significant screwing around. We'll see you then. Bye. Don't use it. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. I already got it. Yeah.